Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. This is Blackheart Sign. I'm black in again. Asking you to hit that share button because uh, the message is more important than the messenger. This message is for brothers that are new uh, to Passport Gate and to traveling brothers and new to SISBIM. S-Y-S-B-M. This is not for brothers that are not new to it and want to sit up and call us all kind of weak MFs and talk about uh, the, uh, you know, the American pussy we can't get. Um, the same for those niggas. My message to you niggas is choke and die somewhere. Because you're sitting up here going above and beyond defending women that are victims of oppression and you stepped over the bound. Uh, yeah, you stepped over the boundary line into defending the guilty women. That's what you've done. So I don't have any information to give you niggas. But to, to brothers that are new to this, um, you're going to hear some of us talk about why we ain't staying in the U.S., especially not looking for no woman. And why we'll go elsewhere, especially if we're going to look for women. I myself got my passport for job-related reasons and then found the joy of marrying uh, non-Ados women. They're still black, but I found this by accident. The other brothers who already know, they're just like, look, if they're tricking, they'd rather trick abroad. If they're looking for girlfriends, they'd rather find her abroad. And if they're looking to marry, they'd rather find her abroad. I only recommend marriage as a Muslim, period, for moral reasons and religious reasons you understand. But the point I'm making is that I'm not going to recommend any of that back in the U.S. dealing with Sister Sapphire. It ain't because I hate black American women. It's because I've sat back and watched them over the course of my life drive away the men who they should not drive away. I've sat back and watched them lie. And I've sat back and watched Becky do this too. So I'm not letting Becky off the hook. I sat back and watched Western women, period, lie to men about what they want. To their classmates, to their buddies, to their younger brothers, to their nephews, sons, and grandsons. I've sat back and watched women deceive men into becoming exactly what these women don't want in the first place. I've sat back and watched good brothers with a conscience grow up. And simply because they weren't hard-headed ass niggas that you could actually tell something to wind up being tricked into being exactly what these women don't want. And I've seen these sisters never repent for it and instead blame the men for not being able to read women's minds. I've seen Becky do this too to her men, but I'm the dude that really is glad to see it when anything bad happens to the white community in the West. I'm elated and overjoyed. I'm happy for this opioid epidemic. I know that um, it can't do nothing as long as we stay out of, as long as we leave that heroin alone, it can't do nothing to hurt us. Finally, something's hurting them and not us. Great, what took so long. But I'm going to say this to, to, to brothers, though. You can hear some of these sisters talk about we weak, we bitch made. We just couldn't get a strong American woman. Um, so we had to go somewhere and trick where the U.S. passport and the U.S. dollar were just such a big deal. Um, that's what you're going to hear. We had no game. Um, OK. You're going to hear not only these sisters saying it, but you're going to hear some brothers saying the same things. I'm going to tell you now. As a passport brother who is dealing with and sometimes even working with other passport brothers, that's not what went on. That's not it. What happened is exactly what it is that the sisters are never going to tell you. They listened to Becky and they listened to White Zaddy and they drove the good brothers off and they sat up and said, well, the warrior class that's those that are real men. And they turned and told some violent niggas that they were warriors instead of just being violent niggas. And they decided to reward these violent niggas with not just the pussy, but the young fertile pussy. And have these niggas babies. And what they want is for you as a normal man to feel like you're actually mediocre, subnormal, bottom 5%. 
not because you're actually that unattractive to them, but because you're simply not as thrilling to them as the violent nigga or the stereotypical nigga, even if he ain't violent. But just the stereotypical itness, intentionally dysfunctional negative stereotype. You, ain't, you don't bring the same thrills, even when she's a 92-octane, well-educated, and classy sister. She still wants the thrills from an itness. And you don't provide them because you ain't about that bullshit. So what she's looking for is actually to have her fun now while she's young with that idness and to trick you into thinking you unattractive so that you'll take whatever comes along and then she can come back to you as an insurance policy later on. That's what it is. If you get a passport and you leave and you find life abroad and your women abroad, then you're off the market for her. That's all she cares about. Nothing else. You are the one who's supposed to pay the price for her to pay for, for her to play for free with another guy. That's it. Angry man said it himself. Angry man even said, if you ain't got swag, these bitches will go get another swagless guy's money and give it to you so that they can have a man with swag and money. He said that himself. Swag. The problem is that the Western bitch doesn't understand real manhood. Manhood to her is swag. And swag is a very nebulous term. She can't define what swag is. And if you really want to know, ask the Western bitch to define what she actually wants in a man when she's an adult. And you know that the stuff they say they want is not what they want. You make her know that, then ask her to say, now what is it that y'all really want? And you're going to find that Becky, the cave bitch, and Sapphire alike are going to have a hard time putting it into words. And they're going to get frustrated trying to explain it in words. They're going to use nebulous terms, a lot of hand gestures, trying to work up some word to describe it because they can't. All of a sudden, for all the talking that women around the world can do, Western or not, they can't come up with words to describe what it is they want in a man. Or why they lied about the shit when they were younger and the men were younger. And you can get rid of all of that if you can get your passport and you can fit the guck out of, of not, not, not just the U.S., but the West in general. When that happens, now all of a sudden she has to deal with the consequences of, of how she was and who she has been. And I'm going to tell you a secret about accountability. The Western woman is actually best suited for the Bedouin Arab man. You see, for you, you the brothers new to this, new to SYSBM and the passport gate and everything else, you may not know about much about me. I live and I work in one of the Arab Gulf countries, um, and I'm teaching. And so I get to see how the Arabs are, the Gulf Arabs are. And the Gulf Arabs are not all the same, even as each other. They're those who come from um, Bedouin backgrounds. And that means that their grandparents were probably the first ones to settle in a permanent structure. And then you've got the ones who are city dwellers. They come from a city dwelling background. That means that they're from the Arabian Peninsula, just like the Bedouins are. But they've been living in cities probably since the time of uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So they don't have the Bedouin customs anymore. Now, you can't look at them and tell them apart right off the bat. But the city dwellers are normal. They're not backwards. But then you start looking at the Bedouins. And the Bedouins who are not a problem are the ones who don't follow Bedouin culture. They just come from Bedouin families. So it's just their origin, but they're not following the customs. They're not the problem anyway. But the better one that still follows the better one culture is a problem. That nigga's irritating. He does not accept accountability. He's never wrong until he's actually right. Then when he's right, the culture kicks in and everybody shames him. And then he feels like he's wrong for doing things like studying, taking responsibility, being on time, let alone being early for stuff. You see that type of thing. Same things for which you brothers would have been shamed when you were growing up. The Bedouin gets shamed for by other Bedouins through his lifetime. 
Now, while you might think that African-Americans are the most lost people in the world, that's not true. Because, see, when we get to be about 18, we can start gelling with other uh, uh, other like-minded brothers that are responsible and we can find that kind of company. The Bedouin can't do that. The Bedouin has to turn his back on the Bedouin community to find company like that that's responsible, punctual. So the Bedouin is the epitome of the nigger. He just doesn't speak black English. That's all because the Bedouin doesn't, he doesn't even speak Arabic correctly. He speaks only his slang and a broken version of Arabic that they use for non-Arabs when they're trying to talk to them. That's all this nigga knows. This nigga can't even speak Arabic correctly. This nigga is never wrong no matter what he does. This nigga goes through life spoiled and he not only wants free shit, this nigga demands free shit, even as an adult. That's the better one. The good thing about the better one is his hospitality. The better one is not vicious. The better one does not walk around picking a fight. The better one is he's not even stingy. Actually, the better ones do share a lot. That's true. The better ones share. They're very generous. But the better one is not responsible. That nigga's not punctual and he will not let you tell him about himself. The better one is lazy. That nigga ain't going to work for nothing he wants in life. He going to use the hookup to get everything. Does that sound familiar? The difference is this. You see, the, 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 the idness that's like that in America, the women want him. Right? Well, the other thing, too, though, is that the idness, eventually he can learn that he's an idness and that he needs to change. Now, the idness, when the sister goes off on him, the idness will stand up for him. Because if he doesn't, of course, the sister would lose respect for him and walk off. Sapphire, she don't want no man she can walk all over. The problem is that Sapphire wants the idness so that she can still somewhat control him. The thing is that the idness is not going to slap her. And the idness, especially when he gets older and that nigga ain't got nothing, he ain't going to leave her. He going to talk some junk, but he ain't going to leave her and he ain't going to slap her. Now, the Bedouin Arab man in the Gulf, when Sapphire, if Sapphire can get with him and she goes off on him, that man is going to slap her. And it's illegal. It costs a lot of money. It's a heavy fine if a husband slaps his wife. But if she says, I'm going to sue you and you're going to pay that fine, he's going to slap her again. He's going to keep slapping until she says, OK, I'm not going to do this no more. I was wrong. He's going to slap her into submission. And if she still don't submit, he's going to use connections to make sure he never pays the fine. He's going to hand her a passport and a plane ticket and say, bitch, you get out of this country. I'm divorcing your ass and I'm going to marry somebody else. You get out of here as soon as your plane leaves. And by the time the week is over, I'm going to already be talking to another woman's father about marrying her. Now you get the hell out of my damn house. Pack your shit and go. I'm going to get the driver to take you to the airport. I don't see your ass no more. Don't call me when you land. That's what the better one is going to do. Well, I'm going to tell him that you hit me at that point. The better one, he may say, look, I will shoot you right now in this house. Call my boys. We will bury your body, report you missing, and nobody can prove we did nothing, so nothing's going to happen to us. I'm not paying you because I slapped your ass because you deserved it. Now say something smart. Smack and do it again. The better one is not going to take accountability, period, just like Sister Sapphire. But he's got a home court advantage over here. So when these... If you knew the passport gate and you start hearing these sisters yapping off and neck rolling and all this stuff, you niggas weak, you niggas ain't real men and all that stuff. Just tell her, well, I heard actually that you could step out on brothers and that you could get an Arab who got money. Have her try it. If she decides to try it, she's going to find that, yep, they got some men here that got money. Them men with the money ain't willing to talk about marrying her. She's going to find that it ain't nothing but bad deals over here waiting for her. And if she gets one of these deals that she doesn't know is a bad deal, she's going to also find that that man ain't going to tolerate no mess off of her at all. Even though it's illegal, he's going to slap the mess out of her. End of story. And he will not pay her 
a thing. That's what this nigga's gonna find. I hope this has been a benefit, brothers. If you're new to this passport thing, I would say uh, check out a, a black man's option on uh, Facebook. And uh, check out Obsidian's live radio page. I hope it's been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.